98 CLK 320 um, W28. I just picked this car up for almost nothing. Previous owner was afraid to work on it. It's got transmission issues. I'm thinking it's the uh, conductor plate because um, it's in limp mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the uh, the conductor plate and maybe uh, rebuild the uh, valve body. See what happens. Other than that, the car is in mint condition. Interior. Yeah, um, everything is fine on it. So I'm gonna just go ahead and replace the uh, conductor plate and the uh, and rebuild the valve body, and I'll maybe uh, replace the uh, the TCM or maybe just flash it or maybe just clean it out it's probably full of oil or something uh maybe um oil wickered up the uh wicked up the uh, the harness into the uh, tcm but we'll see what happens i'm gonna um open up that train and see what happens i've done these before it's no it's no biggie so we'll see what happens see okay 320 All right, here's the uh, conductor, I'm at the uh, TCM. You can see right it's wet. You can also see the uh, plugs there that's wet as well. All right, you see the harness is wet. Again, a common issue with these older Mercedes, the uh, oil begins to wick up the harness there. It's a phenomenon, I don't know why that happens, but it is what it is. You can clearly see right here that this is soaked. Right now the car is in limp mode, so I'm going to try to open this box up carefully. You, you can do it, but just be careful with it. I'll pop it open and then try to clean it with some with some um, contact spray. This is what you want to use. I'm not endorsing these people, but this is what you got to use. Electronic cleaner. Uh, you want to spray some inside, inside the harness in there. And this guy here too. As you can see that how soaked this thing is. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up on it, but you can see right there. It's really wet. Look at that right there. See that? Anyway, let me get this cleaned up. All right, so what you wanna do here is um, carefully get a spatula like this or a flathead screwdriver and carefully get in here. My other video shows it too. Just get in there carefully and just try to pry this, um, separate this cover from this part right here from the board. All right, so here's the, uh, I took the part apart. Um, there is, it does appear to be something in there. But uh, one thing you want to check out too is, especially this area right here, and this part right here from experience. These are the two areas that burn out. But so far, everything seems to be fine. There's nothing burnt out here. Usually they'll burn out right here or, or it, um, it'll corrode right here. Mind you, I'm doing this in the parking lot of, um, of Walmart. You can see right here. I don't know the camera's gonna pick on it, but see right there? This oil right there. It's coated right there around here. All right, so I'm gonna give this a full blast with this right here. Right. Get down there. I'll get under here. You can see the see the dirt coming out. Oh, the camera's gonna pick up on it. All right, let me get back to this. All right, so the valve body is off. Here's the supposedly the new conductor plate that the previous owner put in. I don't see a Merced, an official Mercedes-Benz uh, stamp on it, so I'm assuming it's an aftermarket. But there's a lot of good um, aftermarket um, makers out there, so it's not that bad. I've, I've used aftermarket parts on my um, my other Benzes, but um, one thing I noticed right off the rip is the uh, plastic covers are missing from here and from here. Now, whether or not that will play a part in 
frying these um, solenoids. I'm not sure. I doubt it. But um, if they were here, they were there for a reason. So I'm, I'm going to order them. It's no biggie. Hopefully there's nothing else. So I'm, I am going to pull off these solenoids here. I'm going to test them. See how quick their response time is. And um, most likely I'll replace, I'll remove this top half of the throttle body and I'll clean everything on the inside, all the channels, all the screens, and um, clean out all the check valves and all that stuff. Make sure everything's running right. This here seems to be running fine. Yeah, so I'm not worried about that. But I am going to remove this top off again and I'm going to check each one of these uh, solenoids. See how quick they're responding. This was full of oil in here. Alright, so. But anyway, you can see right here, this is a new part because um, when these conductor plates go bad, this is where they split. They tend to crack right here and now the oil goes in through here and then it just funnels all around. All around the electricals and shorts everything out. Uh, but uh, you can see all the dirt in here, man. This is this 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 car was abused, you know, by the previous owner or the owner before moving. It's a two-owner car when I got it. But anyway, I'm gonna start taking this part out right here, and then I'm gonna show you how I test the solenoids. There's several ways, you know, you can check them with an ohm meter or with a 12 volt battery. I also have a, a mighty vac over there that I can check the, uh, the suction on it, the vacuum, see how, how much it holds for how long. All right, let me get on. So I forgot to point out to you is, try to always have a few of these baking pans around here. See, I got one here, I got one there. I also keep a few over there. I got some down there. But anyway, I go down to my local um, Subway's order and ask them if they have a few um, baking pans that they don't need anymore. That way you can keep everything in here. If it leaks oil, it'll spill inside here. Screws will stay in here. You won't lose any parts. I keep an next one down here. So when I remove the parts from up here, I put them down here. It's just a little tip. All right, so the uh, conductor plate is popped off. You want to pop it off with a flathead screwdriver like this here. Carefully pry it off on both all four corners here and here. And pay, pay close attention to this part over here because it's got like a... A tab here that's extra long and you can easily crack it and just carefully pry it off um, looking closely at this it's not a it's not an official mercedes-benz but um a lot of aftermarket parts work just as good so it's not that most likely this is probably a bat mech being that they're so inexpensive they're like 80 90 bucks but anyway you can see all this black stuff on here all this black soot in here, see that? Sometimes that can spell, you know, catastrophe for some transmissions. Um, I've had this before, my other trainees, my um, other CLK, when it hit like 175,000, I did this job to it, I replaced the conductor plate, did all that jazz to it, and it was worse. All this was coated in black soot, like this right here. Um, I just cleaned it all out, took this half of the valve body off, Clean all the um, channels in here, all the gullies, all the uh, oil passages, the uh, check valves, the screens. And um, I just put new oil in it. And now it's got 327K on it. 327,000 miles in. She runs better and better every day. So I don't know, whatever I did worked. But anyway, I'm going to separate this part right now. I decided I'm, I'm, I'm going to clean everything out, clean out the screens and the check valves. Again, this is the 7226 training for a W208 that can go from 98 up to 2002, 2003, I believe. Also, you can take a picture of it too. See like this right here. Now, three of these solenoids, this one here, this one here, this one here, these are the 393s. These are all the same, so it doesn't matter if you, if you get them confused or anything like that. But I like to keep them in the same spot where I got them from, so. But these three right here, the 393s are all the same. You can use them, and these goes for the 7229s too. But these two guys are the same here. And these this guy here is different. So I'll just step back and take a picture of him. All right, so like I said, don't be alarmed by all this black stuff here. Just um, wipe it down and um, hope for the best. So but don't worry yourself about that for now. Like I said, I've done these before. And a lot worse than this. This is the cover where the, uh, the check files are on the bottom.
All right. Be careful, you want to take this part off here. This is another shield here. All right, I can't do it with one hand. Hold on. All right, so here's the bottom here. It looks messy. All this is going to get cleaned up. I'll put this guy down here. All right, so <clears throat> if you're attempting to do this job yourself, I've done a bunch of these in the past, so I'm already used to doing them already. I'm pretty much doing it with my eyes closed, but there's a bunch of check valves around here. Starting with this one right here, this is like a little filter. These are a couple of check valves right here. Right here, there's a check valve. Um, some of them are plastic, some of them are stainless steel. The one is over here. This one inside here too. If you don't know how to do them, be really careful because if you, if you forget where they go, you're gonna be in a world of trouble. It's gonna be hard to find the schematics on it. I'll post the pictures with um, some arrows pointing where they go. Color sequence or something like that. So I'm gonna clean all this up right here. You can see all the black soot in there. So I'm gonna clean all this up now. This shit is scary. All right, so this is what I'm up against now. Um, there's some parts missing out of this valve body. So I don't know who who worked on this training before I got it. One of the two previous owners did some mess here. Like the uh, like I mentioned earlier, the plastic covers that go over these solenoids were missing. There's a check uh, a filter that's missing from uh, I believe it's this one right here that's missing which is this little guy right here, this yellow guy. This one's supposed to go here and one here. And the second one is missing. So, like I said, I don't know what they did. Somebody tried to be funny, tried to repair it without knowing what's going on. So I'm gonna have to order this. This is definitely a, a um, dealer order. Uh, I, checked, I was checking around eBay and Amazon. They don't have it. So this is definitely a dealer part. So, I'm just gonna replace all the uh, check valves. I already know where they all go, because I, like I said, I've done them so many times already. Um, yeah, I know all this looks intimidating, but uh, when you're used to doing it so much, it's like it's almost second nature to you. I'm gonna test the uh, solenoids now, see how fast they're working. All right, so the uh, valve body's nice and clean now. I used parts cleaner and wiped it down with a um, lint free cloth i still haven't put in the uh check valves the uh plastic ones the steel ones the filters and the um check valve right here um the other half of the uh the separation plates cleaned up on both sides and the other half of the valve bodies cleaned up again using um parts cleaner and um lint free cloth the um again the cylinders were all tested and they're all working fine so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna reinstall the uh the check balls here, the plastic ones and the uh, stainless steel ones, the check valve, the filters. And um, I've done these on um, trainings a number of times in the past, so I know them by heart already. This uh, filter right here is gonna go in this little area right here. Notice the, the shape of it, right? Right here. It's gonna go drop in right there. The second one is gonna go right here. I gotta just pay attention to this part right here. The uh, check valve, which is this little guy right here. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up on it, but notice how it has a little spring in it. Real carefully. Don't lose it, don't, don't abuse it, don't mistreat it. Put it right in there. Uh, the same thing with the uh, plastic um, balls here. One is gonna go in this little funny area right here. It's gonna go in there. The second one is gonna go right here. The uh, third one is gonna go right here in this spot right here. The uh, last one is gonna go, where is it at? Right here in this little spot right here. All right, so that's a plastic ball right here, plastic ball right here, here, and right here, that's all the plastic check valves. And these uh, stainless steel ones are gonna go on, on this half of the uh, valve body, it's gonna go on this area right here. Notice how this area right here is a little lower than the other matting area? So that's where they're gonna go. One stainless steel here, one here, one here, and one here. The other two are gonna go right here in the same area. Notice how this is lower. Two balls are gonna, stainless steel balls are gonna go in there. And then the last two are gonna go right here. Notice notice the uh, the location, one here and one here, right? 
I'm gonna do this off camera. All right, so all the uh, stainless steel check valves are in the check balls. Again, remember what I mentioned to you. Up here, one here, one here, one here, one here. The, the other four are right here, 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 and here. Notice the area how this area here is lower than the matting area here. The uh, check valve is right here. Notice the little spring inside there. The uh, filters are right one here and the other one's right here. The uh, plastic balls are right here, one here, one here, one here, and one over here. All right, so um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the uh, separation plate right here. Carefully put it in here, make sure that the dowel goes through. That's on there fine. And then the uh, the other half of the uh, valve body is gonna go on right here. All you have to do is just line up this right here with this bolt hole right here. Get the uh, dowel lined up. Get this lined up. And that's it. She's on there. All right, so I'm gonna bolt this all down, get all the bolts in there, and then torque it down the spec. All right, so moving on to the uh, conductor plate here. Before you install this piece right here, you want to install these two, um, reinstall these two, um, these two screens right here. They're gonna go, these two of them here, they're gonna go on this area right here. See these two openings right here? Just remember the mark, the marking right here and this opening right here for the filter. So before you put them on, make sure you um, hit it with a blaster, air blaster, blow them out, blow all the debris out of them. But be careful not to blow them out of your hand. Is it real light and they'll blow away quick? So you want to install one in here, just drop it in there, and the other one you drop it in here. It's something just put them in, pack them in there carefully. All right, so you got your two screens in here. All right, now you gotta carefully reinstall your um, conductor plate here. All right, I gotta, I can't do this with the camera. Okay, so the uh, screens are in. You can see right here, you're in here. I'm gonna put the uh, conductor plate in. You wanna, it's pretty much self-explanatory. So you got four holes there for the um, solenoids. You got the four holes here on the conductor plate. Line it up carefully. Um, you also wanna line up, see this tube right here? You wanna line it up, line it up with that hole right there. Just get it in there. That should pop in. You hear it snapping. There's one there. And there you go. She's perfectly under now. Now you wanna go over here and um get your solenoids. Again, these are self-explanatory. There's only one way they can go in. The bigger ones are gonna go in the big hole here. I'm sorry, they're gonna go in like this here. They'll just pop in. The other one goes over here. Notice the, the size of the um the stem here and the size of the hole there. You can't you can't put them in backwards. And see this guy right here? Notice how this has a little hole in here. The other the other three are bigger. This one's gonna go in here. That snaps in. This guy here comes over here and snaps in. That guy's in there. This guy's over here and that guy's there. All right, so the uh, covers are on. These covers right here protect the solenoids from uh, particles falling on them. And then you have this shaft right here, which is the final component in this here. This shaft has to slide into this uh, little guy right here. And uh, you wanna turn it sideways like this here. Slide it in carefully. Lift it up like this. Now this tab right here, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up on it. See that little tab right there? That little tab is supposed to ride on top of this lip right here. Um, so if you come out this way, this little bar right here is going to prevent it from going all the way. Now there's one of two ways you can do this. You can lift it up and loosen up this bolt right here and you can drop this arm a little bit. Or you can pull it this way and carefully pull down on this and slide this forward and just tilt it up like this. And um, now it's sliding in perfectly. See that? This is the easiest way. Don't bend it all the way down, just be careful with it. All right, so this um, this rebuild is done already for this uh, 756 journey.
it's gonna get installed now all right so like i mentioned earlier the uh, valve body the oil pan everything is bolted up everything is torqued down to spec now i'm gonna use my uh, my older mt2500 snap-on to um, reset the code i'm electing to use the uh, 38 pin it's, to me the 38 pin gets to the heart of the computer a little bit faster if you have the uh newer snap-ons you can definitely use the uh obd underneath the dashboard so um, i'm gonna reset this now selection that's a 208 Mine's is a 65. I already know these cars by heart already. It's a 98. Right, I'm gonna get to the computer now. I'll be right back because I need to do this well with two hands. All right, so as you can see, no check engine light on. Codes have been reset. The um, car is shifting perfectly. All the gears are going through smoothly. And um, all is well. Hopefully the cone will come back later on, man, but I doubt of it. I doubt it will. I did the same thing to this car right here. This is my other CL big body right here. This car's done. It just needs a new paint job. I rebuilt the engine, the transmission on that. But um you see it's shifting perfectly now. All right, so I'm happy, I'm content with this. Daddy's a happy camper.